the maze. So this is week two in my look at atomic divorce habits. So what that really means for those of you who weren't with us last week is how do you implement changes that will last, that will be positive for your co-parenting when it can seem really hard. And looking at the work of James Clear and his book, Atomic Habits, how do we apply some of those lessons that he teaches around habits and how we form habits to make good habits as co-parents? So one of the things that he shares is this idea that goals are helpful. And that's nice to know, because in mediation, it's quite common for mediators, particularly family mediators, I think, to speak to parties about what are the goals, what are the objectives, what are the priorities that you have for the mediation? What would you like to achieve? And in particular, I know that we often ask people to imagine that future state. If you've now transitioned through the divorce and separation and you're co-parenting with the other parent, what does that look like? How, how does it work now that you're there? And so that imagining that future state is one way that we help people visualize what things can look like when the present I appreciate can be very far away from that ideal. And one of the things that James Clear says is that's great and goals will help you set a direction, but they won't get you there. And what you need to be able to transition from the present to the goal state is a system. And I think that's a really helpful idea. And that when I started learning to sail, which was a long time ago, and was sailing very small boats, one of the things that I learned, and I think maybe one of the very first things that we learned was don't set a direction, don't set a path, don't set a course based on some marker that you feel is in the water, because the chances are it will move. And as that moves, your course, you're going to go off course. And what they told us to do was to find a point on the land, something that is immovable, that isn't going to shift, and look at that. And whilst I think goals can be movable, I guess what I'm saying is the goal will help you to set a direction. It doesn't tell you how to get there. It just tells you where you want to go. And when James Clear says the goal isn't the path, it's the destination, the system is the path. And that really resonates for me because when parties come in to mediation, if they're willing to, one of the things that I think most family mediators really enjoy doing and helping people set up is what's the roadmap for the two of you to co-parent effectively? That what does it look like that you're moving from a state where you had both a co-parenting relationship and an adult intimate relationship? And one of those is ending. But the co-parenting relationship is an ending. And for some of the people I work with, they have 10, 15 years ahead, minimum, just to get children to 18. Um, and obviously, you don't stop being a parent when a child is 18. So I think that idea of how do you do it is something that we really love working on, of families building their own roadmap. And the way that we do that in mediation to create that system is we talk about the arrangements that parents are putting in place, whether that's around schedules or holidays or what happens on a child's birthday, um, but also the sort of the intangibles, things like communication, behavior, boundaries, how will we deal with new partners, all of those markers and signposts along the way make that roadmap. And I have to say that even though you might say, oh, well, this family looks exactly like this family, actually their roadmaps will be different. That for each family, there are things that are particular, that are special, um, that need to be made, that are bespoke. And that really comes from the parents. But there are things that I think are common themes. And certainly for me, when I'm talking with parents about how do you build that roadmap? How, what are the systems that you wanna put in place to try and implement these goals. Communication is one I think that comes up time and again, that very often communication is either broken because of the process, the transition that parents are going through, or it's always been broken, that actually communication's never gone easily or well, and that it's always been a challenge. And so definitely that's something that family mediators can help with. What does that roadmap for an effective co-parenting system look like? And I think one of the things that James Clear shares that's really helpful is this idea that you 
He says, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fail to the level of your systems. So he really highlights this importance of, it's not about what is it that I want to do? The real challenge is how am I going to do it? How am I going to implement this? How will I operationalize it? What steps am I going to take? How, do, how will I know that I'm doing the right things to get there? For co-parenting, I think that's something that mediators are well equipped to help deal with and that there is definitely a wealth of research out there. There's a wealth of advice from experts around what is helpful, what is supportive for co-parenting, what makes that easier. Um, and just as just as there's this expertise, I also feel that parents often know. I mean, one thing that I feel like I'm collecting is actually good ideas from parents about what, what could co-parenting look like? What are some good structures, some good policies that we can put in place, some good guidelines so that we can ensure that we're role modeling great behavior for our kids, but also where there is a team to give our children the support they need. I think it's interesting when we talk with parents around children, often their goals are very similar. So, you know, often I hear parents say the same things. We want to take the children out of conflict. We want to be able to focus on what they need. We want to be there to support our kids through this transition. And so those goals are often shared. And what isn't shared often is the path. How do we get to this future state where we're supporting our children as co-parents? I think one challenge can be that somebody may have a very clear idea in their head of, I may implement a system, but unless that's a shared system, unless that's a shared belief, it's not, I think, as a co-parenting team, it's not going to work. So your team needs to build a system. What is it that your team can agree on? And there may be things that one parent thinks are really important and the other parent doesn't agree. But what I generally see is that there's a baseline that parents are willing to listen because this is new. So when people are sitting down and thinking, well, what will it look like to be parents if we're not in an adult relationship? Most people have never had that conversation. Most people have never had a conversation about what does it look like if we're parents, even if they're in relationship. So to think about building that paradigm when you're separating can be really hard. But I, I think for a lot of the people I work with, it's a really valuable experience and that maybe for the first time they actually get to co-design what their parenting team looks like and at least over time research would suggest that people will be able to use those roadmaps to guide them initially in a weirdly artificial way um, so for example you know to be told, well, this is how you're going to communicate about issues when maybe you've been married to somebody for 15 years it does feel artificial. I understand that. But that over time, the repetition of that behavior, the communication skills that will be built lead to a situation where people can relax into being co-parents. They don't have to feel this sense of hypervigilance about what am I doing? What have they done? Did I do the right thing? Did they do the right thing? Um, so from my perspective, the system is really where it's at. Next week, hmm, next week's a tough one. Next week, I'm going to be talking about why are habits hard to build and what do we need to do? What is actually happening for us when we build habits? So see you next week. And take care.